Hello and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays. This is the third in the Deep Carbon Observatory's Data Science Summer Series of Webinars to share practice, best practices for data acquisition, processing, and analytics using Jupyter Notebooks. Thank you for joining us. My name is Darlene True Christ, and I'm introducing this series because I have the unique position of serving on both DCO's engagement team and Synthesis Group 2019 both of which are working to share DCO scientific findings with the science community and a broader audience as well. And it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Fong Wong, a member of DCO's data science team. There's another one, Josh. Mm -hmm. And a postdoctoral researcher at the Tetherless World Constellation at Rensselaer Polytech Institute in New York. Fong has a PhD in Earth and Planetary Sciences, and he has successfully tackled the challenge of using big data in his research. Today, he will share his knowledge with us and give us an in-depth look at data processing using Jupyter Notebooks. This is a hands-on seminar that at the end, you will be able to successfully clean and use big data to advance your own research. So with that, a bit of housekeeping. Um, the presentation is set to run about 25 minutes. Um, Fong is, has graciously agreed to stay on the line and answer any and all questions for as long as that takes afterwards. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat room. As the uh, webinar proceeds, please list your questions in the chat room and then Fong will take them up at the end. For now, I'm signing off and taking you over to our expert, Fong Huang. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, thank you, Darlene, for the introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to give a webinar about uh, data science for geosciences, uh, data processing. And thank you for your support to come into the webinar. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming to my webinar instead of watching the England and the Croatia semifinal. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you will learn more from this than watching the football game or soccer game. Uh, to, begin with, to begin with my webinar, I will introduce some resources. Here is a link to all previous DCO webinar videos. Uh, there were webinars talking about, uh, have introduced, introducing the basics of Jupyter Notebooks. Also talk about the visual tools for big data network analysis, and also some data science for geoscience data acquisition uh, and uh, followed by followed uh, follow uh, after the data acquisition is the data uh, processing. Here is another link to the DCO Jupyter Hub is the login page and it requires registration to the DCO account. After logging in, you will have the computational environment setting up. And you have have access to all the Jupyter Jupyter notebooks, all the packages I mentioned. I mentioned I will I'm mentioning in my webinar, and also all the slides in this talk are directly transformed from a Jupyter notebook file, using a Jupyter notebook extension called Rise. And you will see that this uh, this is uh, inter interactive uh, slides. Here is the outline of my talk. I will talk about what is clean data, then how to import data from various uh, types and inspect the data we imported and uh, show some ways to process and uh, how to manipulate the data and save the data. Here is what is the clean data. Here are the five most common types of database model, which is a flat file model, hierarchical model, relational model, object-oriented model, and the network model. In our talk, we, uh, we will mainly focus on the flat file, flat file model. So in the flat file model, each variable forms a column. Each observation forms a row, and each type of observational unit forms a table. 
which means each for each table is one kind of data and we will analyze this set of data. Here is a brief look of, uh, here's a, br a brief description of what the uh, flat table looks like. Uh, it has sample ID to identify different, uh, different observations. They have feature A, feature B, feature C, feature D are different, uh, we can say it's measurements or like time or, or longitude, latitude, or the contributes. And in the, in the middle is, uh, that's all the values of the features. In order to, in order to manipulate and uh, analyze this kind of uh, flat table efficiently, we will use a package called Pandas. Pandas is uh, an open source, high performance, easy to use data structure and the data anal anal analysis tool for Panda Python pr uh, language, uh, Python programming language. And you will see in the following slides that I will you mainly use Pandas for our analysis. Here is the, here I will show you how to import data. Uh, we will import spreadsheet like data, which are like CSV files, Excel files. And also I know people may use MATLAB to write some codes and uh, we can also load the mat .mat file into our uh, pandas and also a lot of other format of data. And uh, at, at the end, I will show you how to directly uh, import data files from web pages, as well as scraping, briefly talk about scraping information from the websites. Here is a spreadsheet. Uh, here is, I will introduce how to import spreadsheet format data. Here in Python, we will first start with uh, this, this uh, command is import pandas as PD. Pandas is the uh, the package I mentioned before, and we will use PD as the abbreviation for pandas. So let me run this uh, code. In, in Jupyter Notebook, you just hit shift and return. It will run the cell. So here, uh, we imported the panda as PD and then use pd.readExcel function to read a uh, Excel file called a methane webinar I prepared for this uh, workshop. And it's a real data set I have recently been working on. After reading the Excel file, we save it into a file name called data one. And we use uh, data one's function called uh, dot head. It will show the top five rows of the data set you will see it has a lot of uh, columns and there's uh, some of them are eliminated. And uh, at the end, there is one column, one empty column, and we will delete that column while before processing this data, data set. And you can see that it has one, 103 columns. And here is, we'll show you how to read a CSV file. So again, we use pd.readcsv and read the CSV file called the methane webinar. This is exactly the same file. I manually uh, re uh, save, save the Excel file, save as a CSV format. They have the same con contents. And after reading in into a, a data two data file, and we can take a look at the uh, top five rows. Again, it has, it, again, it shows the top five rows, but it, is, uh, it has 200, uh, 227 columns, which you can see at the end, there are like a bunch of uh, empty columns. So though we know that Excel file and the CSV file, the contents in both Excel file and the CSV file are the same, but the pandas might handle two types of files slightly differently, but they, are easy, they can be easily uh, revised and uh, we can have the, we can 
basically use them interchangeable uh, based on the, uh, the type of file we have. And also here I will show you how to read a MAT, MATLAB data file, uh, .NET, to see that in order to read the MATLAB data file, we will import, uh, we will use another package called SciPy. And in SciPy, there is a, a sub package called IO, input output. So we will import SciPy IO as seal, so we can use seal as, uh, as the abbreviation. And we will use the um, we will use the CO to load the uh, uh, MATLAB data called the webinar.mat and save them in the metadata. Uh, meta to be noticed that uh, after reading in this data file, it will not automatically change them into the panda data frame uh, data frame format. Instead, it will create a dict type data. Is a dictionary. If you are familiar, it's the same as the map or hash map in C++ or Java. After reading in this, we will we can take a brief look at the uh, metadata. Uh, metadata. It has a lot of uh, uh, variables, and the one we are interested in are like the last one, the pressure, like uh, internal energy gives free energy and stuff. This is the one I've been working on previously. And in order to change this dictionary into a pandas, uh, pandas data frame, we need to run this. So first, we will take the, uh, the, the variables that's of our interest and save that into a list called my keys. And then we will use the dict comprehension to create a new uh, dictionary that only contains the, this, this information that's of our interest. And uh, after, 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 um, after having the new dictionary, we can use uh, the panda, uh, panda data frame a function called uh, data frame from dict. And use this function, we can create a new uh, data frame is called the data three. And after doing that, we can do the same thing. Data three head, you can see that it now contains all the information that's, uh, that we want to use. And to show you how efficient Pandas is, we can show, I can show you the whole data three. And the data three has like, has a 10, uh, uh, a hundred thousand, a uh, um, hundred thousand rows, and that's how efficient it use. We just basically reading the data in less than a second. And uh, other than reading, other than reading uh, uh, MATLAB data, we can also read other formats of data like um, Panda read HDF, HDMI, JSON, and others. So here I have. I can show you this. In pandas, you can use um, auto completion. After after typing in pd dot read dash uh, read underscore, you can tap tab. It will have a have a list of functions you can use. You can read like CSV, Excel, and all these different kind of data sets into into data frame. And also we can read online files. Here is a link I found from random website and it's a CSV file. We can directly put a link in the, uh, we can directly put uh, this, this link into the panda read CSV function. It will automatically take this link and uh, save the CSV file into our Data four, and we can sh I can show you the top ten, uh, top ten rows. By default, it will show you the five rows. If you want to show more than five, you can you can show. If you want to show any number other than five, you can put a number here. It will show you the inf uh, information from the data frame. 
and uh, two scrap uh, scrap information from the web pages, we can use a package called Beautiful Soup. And here is the link to the Beautiful Soup. And uh, it will basically take the HTM, uh, HTML file and uh, taking the information you want from the HTML file and uh, return into um, a, a data uh, into a table where you can save. But I'm not going into too much detail in, uh, in this talk, in this webinar. And after reading in the data, we will pro, uh, perform some inspection on the data. First is we will take an overview of the data using the Panda data frame functions. Then we will look at the both numeric data and the non-numeric data. And uh, also we will use some graphics to get an overview of the data, which is um, uh, in a better way or like in a different way, actually. So here I will sh basically show you the functions of a data frame. So you can see data one is the previously, previously loaded methane data set. If we want to see the top rows of the data frame, we can, we can use the data.head. We can, let's say, we can use data head one, then it will show only one row of that. And also, we can use data.columns. It will return a list of all the column names in this. And it doesn't show everything, but it's in there. It's, let's say if you want to show the 50, uh, the 50 thing, it will, say, it will tell you that is the reactor glass. It don't, is uh, one parameter in the data in the data in the data data table, and also you can take a look at uh, like let's say the temperature column. It will show you the whole temperature column, and uh, also you can use the head function in here. It will show you the top five rows of the of the temperature column. And in, if you want to select more than one column, you can use dot lock function and this um, this this is uh, uh, telling you to select all the rows uh, and uh, you choose these two columns and um, here we show you all the uh, the two columns again you can use both head or tail function in here oh here here is the tail function if you want to see the last five rows or last 10 rows, you can use the tail function. Also for numerical data, you can use the function called the describe. If you use the describe, it will tell you how many counts are there, what's the mean of the data, what's the standard deviation, uh, mean uh, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and the maximum number of this. However, if we perform this on the temperature, it will give you a different thing. So it will say like uh, count, unique, top, and frequent. So apparently, the data uh, there are some there is something wrong with with uh, temperature column, and we will deal deal with this later. And another way to show to have a, to inspect data is show some simple graphics, box plot, bar chart, histogram, and scatter. First, I will show, uh, I will import the, uh, the plotting package called matplot, matplotlib and the sub function called pyplot as plt. And then use this magic, magic command. It will show the graph on, uh, in line in the Jupyter notebooks. And loading this, we will show you the box plot. So if we, sh uh, if we have a box plot of the H2 column, you will see that everything is cramped down and there are a lot of uh, dots here. We cannot really see something from here. However, if we use the box plot on the final pH, you will see that it's a better, it's a better, better visualization. We have a mean value here. Uh, we have a minimum 
value, first quartile mean, third quartile, and the maximum. And these two dots are, are what the model thinks are outliers. And if we take a, back look, take a look back at the H2 column, we can see that most of values are, are uh, outliers by the model. So which means the H2, co H2 column has a much larger uh, range of values than the other column, uh, the final pH column. Also, we can use the bar chart. So if we take a look at the rock type column, the head five rock type column, is, uh, is diff uh, it's strings which are peridotite. And to know how many strings are in there, are in there we can use a function called value counts then it will tell you that there are all these like 13, I think it's 13 different uh, labels and each label appeared like all of them appeared 94 times, predetect appeared 25 times, et cetera, et cetera. And in order to have a better visualization of this, we can use the value counts and the plots as a bar chart it will basically show you a bar chart of the uh, previous information I've, I've printed here. You can see all of it has like more than 90 uh, occurrence and the peridotite less and, and, and you can see these in a much more clear way. This is, uh, this is dealing with non-numeric uh, non -numeric data. In, uh, usually in, the, in Python, we call it a category. We can change it into categorical value. And in R, if you are familiar, they are called the factor values. And also we can use the histogram to show the plot, uh, to, sh to visualize some of, the, um, some of the columns. Here, if we uh, plot the histogram, it's uh, kind of equal to hist, on the final pH, per, uh, you will see that most of the pH are slightly below seven and a bunch of them slightly uh, above seven. So they are more or less neutral and the extreme pH are relatively less common <clears throat> in here. And also we can use a function called uh, scatter Again, uh, we've, as, as I showed before, the temperature column has something wrong with it. If we want to plot a scatter x equal to temperature, y equal to pressure, it will give us some error message. So before dealing with this problem, I will show you the scatter, the scatter plot. Uh, use another thing like final pH and the pressure. You will see that we simply, using this simple line, we plotted the, the x as final pH, y as pressure, and uh, the distribution looks like this. Seems like we are missing a lot of pressure in between. And later, after we deal with the temperature k column, the problem in this column, we will see uh, how to, we will, we will see a successful plot of scatter. Here is another, uh, all the different types of graphics available in Panda data, Panda's data frame. Uh, the line bar, bar histogram and all these. If you are interested, you can go to this website to look into the details. After inspection, we will do some processing and uh, processing on the data and then save the data. Usually in a data set, we will miss, uh, we will see a lot of missing values. And then uh, we will first show how to deal with missing values and then manipulate different data types. And after all that, after we clean the data set, we will save the data set. So again, before beginning all the, before getting, beginning all the uh, analysis or processing, we need to Im import these uh, pandas packages Although we have imported them in, pre, uh, in previous uh, analysis, 
I will just show you here. We actually, we don't need to import it here, right, in, uh, right here, but, uh, because we imported them before. But uh, to show this, to emphasize this, I will show you to import this again. And here I have uh, created a subset of the methane data. So we will see it's called the subdata. In the subdata, we have four columns and temperature K, pressure, rock type, and the final pH. And uh, you can see that pressure is uh, in float format, but temperature is in object format, which means temperature is, uh, there is something wrong with the temperature. And also, we will deal with that. And also, we can see that there are some missing values in final pH because you know it has like 60 less values other than the four other, four other three other columns. So you can see these are the top five rows of this sample. <clears throat> these are and then and then are missing values. To deal with missing values, we have different ways. So first is remove the rows with missing values or remove the columns with missing values. This is not the best way of doing that, but sometimes it's necessary. So we can drop, and if we do a subdata drop NA, it will drop the uh, missing values. Uh, it will drop the missing, missing rows. You can see that our, our data set now start with, uh, from row 17. Uh, one row one uh, row one to row sixteen are all missing, are all deleted by drop and a. Also, we can drop by columns. If we do that, we will delete the whole pH column and while leave other columns the same. And you can see it again. It starts from one, but the but the last columns is gone. And another thing is that if you, if after, after we perform this function on the data frame, we need to save the result into a, into a, data, uh, into a data frame so that we can keep that. If you see that, uh, we, though we perform drop and A on sub, sub data two times, the sub data is still have like four columns, uh, four columns and 235 rows. But the drop, and, but the drop has, three uh, columns. So always to save the data in a, into a new data frame. There are different ways of dealing missing values. If we want to, we can either fill in the missing values with zero or mean, or many other ways of filling missing data, but uh, I'm not going to cover that in this talk. So here we can fill an A with the value zero. You can see that all the final pH, missing final pH values are set as zero. This is not the case because uh, zero pH means something. Uh, and it's important that we cannot um, do that for our pH. Then another way of doing that, we can use a mean. So basically we calculate the mean value of the final pH column based on the existing values, save it into mean value, and then we fill in, fill an A with the mean value and the save, the, save the data back into subdata. Then if we do that, we will see that the missing final pH values are filled in with the mean value, which is 7.6. And a more sophisticated way of doing this is out of scope of this webinar. We can, uh, if you are interested, we can discuss this in, uh, offline. <clears throat> Another thing is manipulate data, data types. As as we showed, as I showed before, the temperature K, there is something wrong with the temperature K. And if we print this out, you can see that from the uh, row 90 to 95, the, the, te the, the numbers are not, uh, are not right. They use comma, comma instead, instead of dot to show the, uh, as decimal points. So in order to deal with this, 
a rotor for loop function to re replace uh, the comma uh, by dot. And, uh, and after that, I, this is, uh, after doing that, I will transform this column into float column so that the temperature K will be uh, transformed into float number. And uh, now if we see the info of the uh, sub data, we can see that temperature is float and the pressure is float. Final pH doesn't have missing value anymore. And um, this data set is basically clean. After all this cleaning, we can then back to see the scatter plot, which gives us error previously. Now we can do the plot to see that uh, we have a temperature and the p uh, pressure uh, in this kind of plot, which usually higher temperature, higher pressure. And uh, it's really good to see that after the cleaning, the, the, the data set finally works. And also we can, we need to change the rock type column into categorical which we use as type function. The rock type, we will change it from the object type into categorical type. And then you see here is category. Well, the reason we change into it into category is because a lot of machine learning or big data algorithms requires uh, categorical data for as input. <clears throat> After that, I will show you how to save data. Um, um, I forgot to clean up this. So, so here is the save data. We can use uh, the data frame and the two CSV or two Excel to save uh, the data file. Uh, and uh, in the in the single quote is the file name is CSV or dot XL XLS X. And uh, we, after running this, the, uh, the data will be saved. And to test uh, whether we save the data cell uh, correctly, we can read in the subdata Excel file again and test it. And we can see that the test file has read in the data file uh, successfully. So which means we saved the data file in the correct way. So after saving the data set, it, the next step is uh, analysis. Uh, so welcome to join the next part of this uh, webinar series on August 8th at 2 p.m. the same time, Data Science for Geoscience Analytics, brought, by, brought, by, uh, brought to you by Anirudh Prabhu, also from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Thank you. Thank you, Fong. That was really great. I'd like to open it up to the audience if anyone has any questions. If you do, type it in or we can unmute you as well. Okay. Can, can I see the question somewhere? Everybody's unmuted, so if anybody has a question, I'll start. Um, I think you really showed the power of using Jupyter Notebooks to analyze your data. Um, I was wondering how long it took you to become confident in using Jupyter Notebook. If I, it depends on whether you have previous uh, experience or not. If you are familiar with R, MATLAB, or Java, or C++, I think it's pretty fast because Python is really easy to use. Mm -hmm. If you have no experience, I guess a couple of weeks you can you can get to use this uh, confidently if you find the uh, right resource to teach you. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the main thing is practice. If you use Python in your work, you will get familiar with it uh, faster. 
I didn't intentionally ask that question, but I do have something to share with the audience as well. Um, DCO has posted other Jupyter Notebook tutorials on our YouTube channel. So um, as Fong suggested, if you want to learn the basics, um, you can begin there as well. Yes. Anything else? Fong, could you, um, so I'm, I'm actually talking through Darlene's channel. I'm sitting in the back here. Um, towards the end, you talked about switching the data type, uh, the rock, um, rock yeah, type. Rock folder. Yeah. Yes. Can you explain that once again? I didn't quite catch that, that bit. So if you look at the, here, so the rock type, uh, before, before the, yeah, maybe, sorry, here. So the rock type previously is object type, which means it's a high level type uh, or, or it's a low level, uh, it's a high level type in Python, which if the program don't know what type it is, it will change it into object type. Mm. So which means a lot of function cannot run on this type of data in order to uh, let the program know what the type is, you need to subsign the object into a certain type. And usually, because in our model, the rock type has like all of them parentheses, different type of rocks. Uh, each type of rock is one category. So we change it into category type and uh, Using the category type, we can use, let's say, machine learning uh, program as like um, random forest or other other uh, algorithms to run this data set without the problem. But if it's an object, the algorithm cannot take in take it in as um, as a input. Gotcha. All right. Thanks. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> There doesn't seem to be any other questions, but I would um, suggest that those who are on the webinar look in the chat box. There are links to everything that Paul addressed. Um, and so please use that as a resource. Ting Ting, are you trying to ask a question because your name keeps popping up? So please have the floor if you have a question. Okay, <laughs> it may be a quirk of the program. Well, uh, speaking on behalf of everyone at this side of the screen, thank you, Fong Wong. That was really very informative and we'll get that archived and post it so other um, researchers can avail themselves of your knowledge and expertise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. Yeah. See everyone yeah. on August 8th. Yeah, and now we can watch the soccer game. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.